Hello there. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Linda. I'm Norwegian, but I live in Spain. I am a teacher and I love to crochet, as you can see here. Today, I'm going to show you how I've made this cardigan. I'm making a tutorial because some of my subscribers asked me, how did I make this cardigan? So the last week or so, I've been making this cardigan it's a size XL and uh, I will take you on my journey in this process of how to make this cardigan so if you want to follow me come along and we'll make it together it will not be a hundred percent tutorial with a hundred percent measurements and everything but it will be more or less um, I'm I haven't made a pattern for it yet so I will wait with that but I have, uh, I've now started, I've made seven squares and I need eight. So that's the first thing I have to do, make eight squares and we'll take it from there. For this project, this cardigan, I will of course use my scissors or cutters, a, a hook size number four and an embroidery needle to weave in the ends. The yarn that I'm going to use, I'm using the Melissa yarn different colors. It's 100% um, cotton. I have the blue, this green, and this beige color for the squares. I'm making eight squares and I have already made seven. So now I'm going to show you how I do one of the squares, the, the eighth that I need. I do not do a magic ring. I chain one and I uh, well, I make a slip knot and I chain four and then I um, connect them in the back or the first um, first uh, loop or yeah, and then I take a slip knot and then I chain two and now I will be making the granny square stitch. I have already got one here, so this is the second there and the third and then I chain two in between and I need four of these clusters now I have one two three clusters I'm missing one well, I've got one left to do so one double crochet two and three and then I Stop it with the two chains and fasten it in the first, uh, on top here on the first um, stitch and a slip knot. That was the first round. And as we can see, I need two rounds. So I will continue with this while later there will be one beige, one blue and one beige. So now I chain two and then I, no, I chain three because I want to start in this next, I'm not going to use this one now, I'm hopping to the next hole. And here I then do a oh, first one cluster with three double crochets, two and three, and this is a corner. All of these are going to be corners, so then I chain two, chain two, and then I do another cluster. One, two, and three. And I always like to chain one in between. So now I go to the next corner, chain one, and now I'm going to for the last corner. And here I have already one. So this will be my last double crochet. So I will do one, oops, one, two, and three, and then chain two, and one, two, and I will not be, do, be doing the third one because this is the third one, then I go around it and I make a slip knot here so and now I end up in the middle here you change it there so I like to do a slip knot and cut my thread 
and this is bad <laughs> and then take it out like that and uh, now I like to start from the corner so I will do whoops and I guess you can make a slip up be first be first but I I'll do I do this and then I will chain chain two one two no yeah two and then I will start in this so I have one and then it's this is two and then this is three and chain one and now I'll go to the side and here's just another cl a normal cluster one two and three chain one and go to the corner the corner is just the same as I did on last round and now I've done the three here and I need to make the chain one, two, and connect it to the top stitch on this side and make a slip knot. Maybe I did already do, I think maybe I did three here. Let me go back and see. I was here and from here I need two, one, two chain, and then connect it to the first stitch on this with a slip knot and now I'm going to change until blue and I'll do the same you can do how you want to do it but I will cut it off here here I've got mm, the the eight squares and on the bottom I have two on top of each other because this will be the pocket of course I will now be doing a white row um outside all of these and then i will be starting to make kind of a square around three panels and i will be connecting them here and here on each side this will be one panel front panel and this will be one, another front panel now i have uh, made three of these with the white around with two rounds of white and uh, I'm going to make one more round of white on each of them so that this is where I will be connecting them like this here now that I have connected them all the three of them like this I will be making the a granny stitch all the way around. Now that I'm coming here to where I connected the two panels or two of the panels, I will make one cluster in here somewhere, just picking a random place, more or less random place. And then in the next hole of the next uh, granny square. So like that. And I'll just be continuing now all the way around. And I will now be doing a beige round outside. And then I'll be doing two rounds of white after that I have now completed two rounds and uh, I will going in be going in here I will uh, do some more rounds here of um, well back and forth granny square stitch like three four rounds and then it will be kind of coming a bit in now that I'm reaching the end I will do the cluster here in the end in the corner and then i will do uh, uh, <laughs> chain one two three and i will turn my work 
and then go the opposite way and I will not do anything here but I will start in this hole and go the other way now I'm approaching the end again this will be my last hole where I put the cluster and I chain one and I turn it and I will now be making one two maybe it's just two but I'll do three let's see if that's not I think I'll do just I had already done one so I guess this will be enough so and then I'll be going back again So it will look like this, kind of like stepping stones, I mean stairs, steps on a stair, and then on here it will be more erect, uh, <laughs> more erect or more straight. Last time I made a hole here, so now I have now I have a hole that I can use to make the cluster. And then one, two, three, and I will turn my work again. And I'll just be continuing this, I think, at least five times. I'll see how it turns out when I've done five of these. I'm now on my fourth row. row. So this was what it looks. This is what it looks like. I'm now just going to cut off here and drag it through so that there, there is the front panel the right front panel now that I will start the back panel I will uh, make five rounds of granny squares white granny squares and I start on the same way that I started the granny squares in the front panel chain two and a new cluster kind of a cluster three double stitch double crochet chain one one corner done and I do the same for this next one so this is just how I continue for five rounds before I change color I don't want it to be really colorful I just want to break the white with one round of uh, blue one or turquoise one round of beige and one round of blue um, every so many rounds so the white will be the main color and then i'll break the the white with uh, a touch of color every so many rounds so when i've done these five first rounds then i'll Come back with a turquoise for one round and then I'll continue with a white uh, for some rounds and then a touch of beige and then I'll continue with a white again and then a touch of the blue and then depending on the size I will go, go come back with a turquoise again uh, after some rounds etc until I have the same measurements as the front panels have together so now I am almost reaching the, the round here this is my third round and then for connecting it now that I did a slip um, chain I chained one and then I'll just take uh, connected here and slip knots into this and now since I am at this part I won't do this um, hole now I'll do this one then I'll chain three before before I jump to the next hole now I've done the five rounds with white so I'm off to the turquoise turquoise color start in the corner that's what I prefer and just for one round and then I'll change again uh, I will come back when I finish the white and I'm going off to, uh, to the beige one 
because this you can do on your own. So now I have done three rounds of the white granny square stitch and uh, I will now do one round with beige then another three rounds of white and then another another one round of the, the blue one and um, then white again and then we'll see how it um, lines up with the front panel. I have now done Th uh, after this brownish grey, I've done three more rounds of the white. I had done one round of this blue and one other round of the white, but I'm reaching the end. I want two more rounds now and I don't want to end it with the blue and the just one round of white. So I'm taking two extra of the white. So there will be uh, five whites after e each other. And then the width of this will be 60, 62 centimeters. So that is the size that I'm going for. And um, yeah, I'll just do that now. And then um, to continue this and to be done with it, with the back panel. I've completed the five rounds all the way around and in addition I have done three more rows on top here because I want a, kind of a long cardigan if not it will be cropped and now I'm going to put on the two front panel to see how they how they do how they come out so I don't know if you can see but this is longer than the back panel and I'm still going to add one more round for this. So it will actually be uh, a bit more in like that. So I have, have an edge up here because I will do one more round the whole way around. And then it will be even longer here. So later well, well, so now I will be adding this also, but at first I think I will be doing one more round of this um, panel, front panel, and then I will complete this front panel. What I did for this round was that I started here and I went around. And then when I'm now finishing here, I will... Uh, make the final step by ending it here then there will be kind of a kind of a step here maybe maybe it won't be a step either but I will um, I will end it right in the next cluster right here so maybe it's actually even better if I just chain one and I connect it to this. Let me see how this looks. Maybe I should take it here. Hmm. How does that look? Yeah, this is lining up quite well. Hmm. It doesn't matter if it's a bit, little bit, but it's it's the correct place that it starts here and then. Uh, here it's not 100% the same, but it's good enough. So now I will do the last round and this is Well there <laughs> this is the hole that I will start with which is the same as this So I will connect it here and I'll just do a slip knot Like that, and then I will chain two, so I get a bit uh, crochet things before I do this cluster here, and then I'll do all the way around until this up. What I should do now is that I should count how many rows I have down here. 70, 60, 62, 63. I've got 63 here on these. And let me see how many I got on the back panel. 58. So I'm 
I like five. I need to make five rounds down here. <laughs> I will do one row of the blue one here, and then I will do four rows of the white to finish it off. And what I also do in the end is that since, as you can see, uh, just a moment, when I connect this one, I'll show you. As you can see here, it's not very nice when it has a blue color in the end here. So normally, I when I finish all of it, this, I do one round with uh, double crochet all the way around. Uh, of course, on the front panels, it will just be on the top, on the, the outside and on the bottom, and not on this inside. So here now, I have my cardigan put up and I will now connect up here on the shoulders and then afterwards I will connect from these side, sides and down and it will be more or less from this line here and down so it, it will be quite uh, quite an opening um, <laughs> quite an opening um, Let's see how many centimeters that would be. I, I want kind of like 25 centimeters. So, okay, it's not that. It will be more or less here, 25, 27. So a bit further up, maybe to this gray area here. That's where I will start connecting them. Down to the bottom. I will do this side first. I'll take this off. And go from the outside until the middle. No, oh, slip knot. And when I do this, I first find kind of a good um I feel kind of nervous because I'm feeling I am do not doing it correctly. But, well, no, what am I doing? Like this, from the outside and in, and then I'll do the, it here as well. Yeah, here we go. That is my start. Yeah, and then I will just do the outside here, the outside here, let's see, that was where the whole, well, okay, and then I, you can, I actually, I reckon you can do it, take it through all of the th three holes at once, but I have gotten uh, used to do one, two, three. <laughs> It takes more time, so if you can do the three at once, it will be better. Like this. No, see there, I cannot do that. The second one isn't working for me, so I need to do one, two, three, and then just tighten it a bit. Be sure that it doesn't. that it doesn't uh, shrink, kind of shrink. Here it is now. It is really coming about. I have three or four things left to do. I have to um, sew on the pockets. I will do the ribbing. I will do that later. And I have to do uh, the sleeves and weave in the ends and then I'll be done. So I think I'll go with the sleeves right now. When I am starting the sleeve, I start under the armpit or well in the armpit and I uh, make 
first a slip knot or a single crochet like this a single crochet and then I uh, chain one and two and then I start in this same hole and I want to make this a uh, cluster and then I skip three one two three and in the fourth well of course I have to do this so one two three and the fourth if you want really big sleeves you can um, uh, skip two and go in the third hole but I and um, from experience it is enough with every four one two three and four and then I'll just go around the whole way until I get back to the starting point again. Now I'm reaching the top and here it's a bit different. So here I normally go in this hole and just looking like skipping two or three more or less and then I make one cluster there. And then from here, like one, two, three, well, more or less here. And I look, maybe this is a bit much, so I can go back and take only what I think is skipping two. One, two, and then this one. Like that. And then I continue until I reach the beginning. Instead of skipping one, two, three and make a cluster here, it's too close to the first one. I skip one and two and I do it in this one. And then to connect the two clusters, I um, go in the hole there and make a slip knot. The hole is a little bit bigger, but that doesn't matter. And then I'm just chain one, two, three, and I start in this hole again, I go, and I go another round. <clears throat> now I've come to the end, and I will make two double crochets in this one, and connect it with this leg or whatever, to make it a cluster, like that. And then I'll continue with two chains and then a cluster here and this is how I will continue the whole way until I've made the length but of course I will not have it this wide all the way so when I've done like between five or ten five or eight um, rounds I will see um, and um, uh, I will look at it and see where I want to start the decreasing and I'll come back to you when I'm starting to, starting to decrease just to show you how I decrease even though I guess others maybe have other ways to decrease I have my methods <laughs> I know, don't know if it's a good one but I'll show you mine now I have reached well I've done 18 rows instead of just uh, 5 to 10 or five to eight, I have done 18 rows of this sleeve. And now I think it's about time that I start decreasing. It's not so wide, so I didn't have to, I don't think I have to decrease anymore from the beginning. So um, now I will do that here. And the way I do it, well, first on this round, it's not a really a, a good decreasing. Mm, that's it. In this hole, I should make two double crochets. Instead of that, I will just do one. One double crochet and then connect it with this one. So it's a little bit less than what it's normally. And then I'll go around again and make another round. 
and the next round I will stop again and show you. Now I've reached the next round and here as well I will just, I should have done here now a whole cluster, I will just do one double crochet so that it won't be a big hole between here and then I will um, connect it like this so it's 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 narrowing a little bit and I will just do this on every round for about 10 rows maybe, rows maybe 10 rounds so now I'm at my 19th and I'm going to do 35 more or less and then I will have the ribbing so uh, I think that will be enough but now for maybe 8 to 10 rows I will de decrease so I've done 2 and I will do more or less six, seven more, or something like that, to see and see how it how it will be. I'm getting there again, so I have a leg here, so I'll do one single crochet, uh, double crochet, and then add the leg to here, so there will be a bit holy, uh, <laughs> kind of like holes. Um, what you may uh, sometimes when I do this, it's um, kind of like this seam will be a bit um, on the side instead of directly on the sleeve under the sleeve it will maybe slide a bit diagonally I, so it's not perfect but this is the way i do it so if you have another way you can do that and if you are like me that you don't care too much <laughs> you can do this Como puedes ver aquí, esto no es muy bonito. Seguramente se puede evitar, pero en todo caso, eso va a estar debajo del brazo. Así que yo lo dejo así. Pero... Si tu... <laughs> oh, I'm speaking Spanish. Um, as you can see here, this is not very beautiful, of course. This is the diagonal line that I was talking about. Of course, this will be under the arm, so you won't be noticing it very much. So I will just leave it. But if you have an, a better idea of how to avoid this, I recommend you do that. I have now done 33 rounds and I've measured on my arm that it's about here and I want uh, cuffs. So I'm going to do that now. I will continue from where I am at and I will chain well I've already chained three so I'll chain eleven four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven so this will be the cuff it will be a bit shorter because when I now start I will go into the ninth loop and uh, make a single crochet and then I'll go back uh, in all of the loops down to the sleeve hmm. oops difficult to find exactly but well, it doesn't matter and this is now the last one. Oh, I didn't count well let's see one one two one two three four five six seven eight nine and then the tenth is on the the hook so it's nine and then I will attach it here and tie it and another another one but depending on if you want it loose or tight you should take one and then two loops like that and then go all the way through and then we're turning and we do the back loops all the way up again 
So now it will be more tightened here. So there, in the back loop, one, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, all in the back loop. And now I will chain one. If you see, you know, this is the first that I will go going to do on the way back. But first I will chain one and then I will go back. And this is the first loop there like that. And then I turn it one and then in the back loop again, two, three, four, Five. Can you even see this? Six. Oops. Mm -mm. Six. Seven. Eight. And here's the last one before these two crossovers. Nine. And again, now I'll do the first one double. Uh, in the stitch, yarn over and make take it through. And then in the next one, the same. And then I'll go through all of them. And then I'll just do an ordinary in the next one. And in the end, we'll see how it, it works, if it's a good fit or if I have to do it again. And then I will, maybe I can do, instead of doing let me show you. Instead of doing just the first, no, oh, sorry, not yarn over. Through there and one yarn over and there. If this is not enough, then you can also do it the next time, like this, if it's not tight enough. So you can do that twice. But I'm thinking and hoping that it's enough to do it once every, every time I'm down here. And then it's just to continue all the way. Remember to do the first loop. You have to count in this, at least in the beginning, before you get used to this. You have to count count every time because, because it's kind of easy to, to slip the first uh, stitch down there so that you only, only do eight, maybe. So um, please count them. And as it gets, this part gets bigger, it's easier to do because it's easier to hold. <laughs> Except the last one. Sometimes you have to do a bit. Another thing I should have done, I think I'll start again. I'm using the uh, four millimeters, but of course for the cuffs, I should use the three millimeters. So I will change that and go back and do it again with the three millimeters. And then I'll come back to you when I've done the whole thing and I'm connecting it. Now I've reached the end and uh, I just attached it here. And now I will connect the two. I will do that the same way as I connect um, the two panels, like this seam here. So I take one here on one side and one on this side and I take them through. the stitches, all the loops, one there and one here, oops, and through the loops. <laughs> right now I don't even remember. This is what, what I normally do, like I do now. The first two I did from the, uh, the back loop. Now I do the front loop and that's what I normally do. 
I can feel that in my fingers that that is what I normally do. Oops. Approaching the end. I'll do one more so I get to the top on the edge here and on the other edge. Keep getting through, through and through, and then I make a slip knot. Maybe you don't have to do that, but I do. Maybe it's a bad habit but that's a bad habit that I'm doing. So that's how it looks like. So that's one sleeve and I'll do exactly the same for the next one. I think this looks quite well, quite good. If I try it on now, this is how it looks like. Uh, a bit bulkier here and a good tight cuff. Now that both of my sleeves and the cuffs are done, I'm going to start the ribbing in front. But first I want to find out where I want to put the button. So I'm thinking, let's see. I'm thinking here. So I will put the stitch marker here so that I know that when I come around here until there, then I will make a hole on the ribbing. So, uh, yeah. When I'm going to add ribbings and that I don't, I'm not using a, a thread from before, I can either fasten it first and then go from there, or I can uh, make uh, 11, oh well, not that many, uh, eight um, chains, eight, nine chains, and go back and then fasten it. And I think I will do that because then the first part of it, can, I can tighten a bit uh, further down here because it's very easy to start too, um, too far, far up. Well, it's, this is this way, right? It's easy that it's coming a bit too far up and we need to fasten it further down. So I will chain nine, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I'll go in the eighth, no, the seventh, sorry, one, oops, two, three, Four, five, oops, <laughs> it's so difficult when in the beginning, five, six, and seven. Um, yeah, I think this is a good size. And then I'll fasten it in, in what I th think is the further, the furthest down. And I will do one more here, fasten it there. And then I'll be continuing going up here. As you can see, I'm still using the three millimeter hook for the ribbing. So now I'll go seven, one in the back loops, two, three, Four, five, six, and seven. I chain one, and this is my first one to go back again. Two, three, four. 
five, six, and seven. And then I'll chain uh, or I, I'll connect it here. And uh, since this is uh, not a cuff that is going to be tightened, tightening, then I use all of the all of the holes or all of the stitches so that it doesn't um, uh, so it doesn't uh, <laughs> what's the word so it doesn't stretch inwards and then I'll uh, just go along all the way around until I come to the stitch mark and then I'll show you what to do there to make a hole okay now I have reached to where the stitch marker is so now I'm going to turn here my first stitch and my second stitch and I'm going to chain two because this is where the stitch marker is and I want the hole for the button and this is the button I think I need two chains chain two and then I will skip one, two. Oh, sorry. I no. I need to do one more. I need three first. I done two, and then the third one, and then one, two in the chain of chains. Skip one, two, and go in the next one, the sixth and the seventh. There we go. And then I fasten it uh, in here and the next stitch and then let's see i think this will be good when i now go back i first take the one like normal and two like normal and then i like to go around the whole hole one two to make it a bit nice nicer I think and then the three last ones one two and three and chain one so there I have made that hole that is for the button now I'll just continue the rest of this um, border so now I have uh, um, completed the ribbings I've placed a stitch marker on the other side so that I know where to put, uh, where to sew on the bottom. And then through the hole. Oh, sorry. I'm not going to do double strand. I don't want to do that. There, so I have some left for the uh, fastening. And then I go back there and I will go up and down three more times, I guess. Twice. Three times. And then a fourth time. And then it's just for me to to um, to sew, not to fasten the ends. Then there's just one more thing to do besides um, besides uh, what is it called? Besides weaving in the ends, and that is to sew on the pockets. I have now fastened the pocket with stitch markers. I am starting from the behind of course but yeah first i will do let's see where's the thread here it is yeah i want to have a little tail to fasten them and then i turn it a bit whoops, like this and i will sew it on and of course in this corner i will do more and i will Take it off. And 
in this corner like two three round three rounds up in the corner i i kind of messed up in the beginning here so let me do it again yeah now it's okay so now it is here in the corner i do like two or three four rounds like three or four rounds in the corner so that it's well fastened there and then i of course um since this is two lines here then it will be two lines here as well and the last one is white so now i will be just attaching it like this all the way around and that's what i do i'll see you back when i'm done so here is the cardigan all done, uh, the cuffs, the pockets. Uh, I've not woven in the ends yet, but uh, other than that, it is done. This is the back. And uh, yeah, this is an XL. I would uh, have liked it to be a bit bigger for me, so a double X, but it's, it almost fits me. It fits me like open, right? It's okay, but I prefer it a little a little bit bigger so that was all for now thank you so much for watching and uh, I'm not a professional so please don't complain to me if I am um, if I have done something you shouldn't uh, or something you know that it's done better in another way uh, I just do what I do and uh, I haven't I haven't learned it from somebody I just go with the flow and uh, make it so so if you found that it wasn't so good well scroll to the next video or something but thank you so much for watching and uh i see you next time bye bye